Hello guys. I am back with another video and I got some messy shit for y'all today. In today's episode, I'll be talking about Peter Lawford, the black sheep of the Rat Pack. Peter Lawford was not very well known other than association, like hanging out with Frank Sinatra, the Kennedys, and Marilyn Monroe. Before he died, he took a lot of secrets with him to the grave. But before I go any further, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and comment below, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Disclaimer, I am not sure what is true or false in this video. I just find the information about a celebrity and make videos. This is not a biography channel, and it is just for entertainment purposes only. Please do not take any information from this video as factual. Thanks. Peter Lawford was born in London in 1923. He was the only child of Sidney Turing Barlow Lawford, who was a general and May Somerville Bunny. May and Sidney had an affair while they were both married. They both divorced their spouses and Peter Lawford didn't find this secret until he was 27 years old. This was all part of her plan. She was the type of woman who wanted to live the aristocratic lifestyle and she saw Sidney as her way to the top. Sidney was a British commander with wealth and power, and she was attracted to that. Peter's mother, May didn't want children and stated that Peter was a mistake and she would often tell them this. It has been said that she even tried to commit suicide the day of her labor. Peter and his mother have a strained relationship. This woman dressed his son as a girl until he was age 11. He would often show him affection and she would ignore him for months. Peter was never formally educated and he was schooled by governesses and tutors. His education included tennis and ballet lessons. He also took Spanish, German, and music. His mother picked what course he should take, and the reason was that she believed that he was unfit for any career except art. At age seven, he made his first debut film, which was called Poor Old Bill, and had an uncredited role in A Gentleman of Paris. At that age, he was molested by two older men and one female. It had been said that this affected him. At age 14, he got into a serious accident and his right arm nerve cell was damaged. He could not be enlisted into the war as his father had hoped. Peter decided to follow his passion and become an actor. Peter knew if he wanted to make it big, he had to go to California, Florida. During their stay in California, the family went broke because they had their wealth in England. Peter decided to work his way and move to the West Coast and become a star. While he was in Hollywood, he took ho-hum jobs like being an usher for Westworld Village Theater in Los Angeles. He didn't become famous until 1944 and was offered decent roles. What made him stand out in Hollywood was his British accent and it charmed fans, especially the female fans. He began to act with heavyweights like Angela Lansbury, Judy Garland, Fred Astaire, Elizabeth Taylor, and many more. With his fame, also attracted attention and he started to have affairs with Ava Gardner, Jean Carmen, Betty Grable, and Elizabeth Taylor. One relationship he had was with Dorothy Dandridge. He truly loved her and wanted to go public about their relationship. Their publicist told them that this move would ruin their career. Peter was supposed to speak at Dorothy's funeral, but he was so overcome with emotions that he was not able to deliver the eulogy. When he was at MGM, his mother told Louis B. Mayer that her son was homosexual. She did this because he wanted him to keep an eye on him. Lana Turner and Peter Lawford dated for eight months. However, Lana left and stayed at Boston and didn't tell Peter. Peter called Lana and broke up with him over the phone. Peter's manager said that he was heartbroken and didn't get over Lana for about a year. And that's when his view on women changed. He became heartless, cruel, and used women as sex objects. Apparently, she left him for Jean Krupa. In 1949, Peter met Patricia Kennedy, who was JFK's sister. They didn't instantly fall in love until a couple of years later. They would often meet at parties, and that's when their love started to blossom. In 1954, they wed and had four children. Christopher, Sidney, Victoria, and Robin Lawford. Peter also joined the Rat Pack because of his connection with the Kennedys. Peter was first introduced to Kennedys when he was an aspiring actor. Peter Lawford was hired to park cars for the patriarch, Joe Kennedy, and he fell in love with the entire family. When he married Patricia Kennedy in 1954, he fully became part of the Kennedy's family. Peter adored JFK to the point that JFK took advantage of him. JFK would come to Peter's dressing room and would just take his money that he left on the table. Peter would ask JFK not to do that, but JFK would just ignore him. With his involvement with the Rat Pack, Peter arranged many trysts for JFK with Hollywood beauties like Marilyn Monroe. Sinatra also got involved with the Kennedys because Joe Kennedy wanted Sinatra to use his organized crime ties to influence the union vote, dangling a potential administration position as motivation. Peter also helped groom JFK on how to present in front of the camera and what suit to wear. In 1960, Peter became a United Citizen just so he could vote for his brother-in-law, JFK, for president. Sinatra made it clear to Peter that he was only a member of the group because of his connection to the Kennedys. Even though he was the black sheep of the Rat Pack, he did benefit from the group due to his association. 
The Rat Pack was known for being glamorous, ranking in millions from films, concerts, and personal appearance. His career slightly began to kick off by appearing in Ocean Eleven with the Rat Pack. Gossip began to spread around that Lawford had ties with the Mafia and he has arranged orgies to Sinatra, JFK, and Monroe. Sinatra and Lawford's relationship would soon end, when he had to break the news to Sinatra that JFK would not come and stay at Palm Spring with him. RFK began to get worried that Sinatra had deep connections with the Italian Mafias and the reason for this action was to protect JFK. Sinatra was not happy and decided to end his relationship with Lawford. Lawford was written out of the next Rat Pack film. Lawford and Sinatra never spoke again. Before Monroe's death in 1962, Lawford talked to her on the phone briefly. After her death, Lawford was at Monroe's house cleaning up evidence that would be traced back to the Kennedys. He hired a private investigator named Fred Ottash to finish the job. Lawford was so drunk that he began to act paranoid in front of Ottash. Ottash sends an associate to Monroe's house to complete the job. Peter Lawford would conduct multiple affairs with the Kennedys in his house. Peter would also do drugs and alcohol with the Kennedys. His behavior with women and substance took a toll on his marriage with Pat Kennedy. Pat was fed up with his affairs and his drunkenness that she filed a divorce in 1966. After the divorce, Peter blamed himself for cheating on Pat. He also started to show up to work late, drunk, and this started to piss off the studio heads. He started to lose work and began taking roles in television. Peter, now 48 years old, met 22-year-old Mary Rowan in 1970 and later married her in 1971. He had recurring roles in Doris Day's show and did other television appearances. In 1975, he divorced Rowan and one year after his divorce, he met and married an aspiring actress, 25-year-old Deborah Good. After two months, he was separated from Deborah. Peter, at age 52, married an 18-year-old woman named Patricia Seaton. On his final days, he would write letters to JFK, even though the man is dead. He also struggles with alcoholism, drugs, and spend more time with prostitutes and having kinky sex with them. His health started to decline and had to get a pancreatic tumor removed. He also suffered from kidney and liver failures from all the drugs and alcohol. He spent his remaining days at Betty Ford Clinic trying to recover. On Christmas Eve in 1984, Peter died from cardiac arrest at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Seaton got Peter's body cremated, which pissed off the Kennedys because they are Catholic, and it is against their religion. The Kennedys would not pay interment of Lawford's ashes. His oldest son, Christopher Lawford, stated that they would stand by their Catholic faith and his father is not even worth it. Victoria Lawford sent $430 to cover the disinterment fee. His ashes were to be removed from Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery. The National Enquirer decided to offer Patricia a boat so they can get the scoop for their newspaper. Patricia stated that by doing this was to free her husband from the Kennedys so they can no longer control him even in death. After his death, Peter Lawford's mother wrote an expose called Mother Bitch, exposed the Kennedys, the royal family, and her own son, Peter Lawford. The book mentioned how she felt his son could have helped Marilyn and not be so mean to her. It is really sad how this man was used by everybody and disregarded after they were done with him. If he didn't associate himself with the Kennedys, he would have had a decent life and a successful career. Rest in peace, Peter Lawford. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Leave a comment and share this video to Facebook or Instagram. Bye. Be back with another video.